All right. So, World of Warcraft Dragonfly pre patch launches on October 25th. Surprising absolutely no one at this point because, you know, there was, a, there was the leak that had stated that the game was coming out on November 28th and that the pre patch was coming. Uh, was coming up on the 25th. Interestingly enough, wait, it's going to be on the 26th for you. Oh, right. U.S. always gets stuff first, right? I always, I always forget that part. U.S. is going to get... U.S. always gets stuff first. Wait. No, it's going to go live at the same time. It just so happens to be 25th in the U.S. still. So that means it's going to be like midnight or something like that, I would, I would imagine. The launch roadmap states October 25th, pre-patch begins, November 15th, Drakthir playable, and Twitch drop. November 28th, launch day and Twitch drop, December 13th, raid opens and Twitch drop. Man, I should I should talk to Blizzard to enable drops on my channel. Hey Blizzard, you want to enable drops on my channel? Like let me let me know. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, imagine Blizzard being like, yeah, sure, no problem. We'll get right on that. Every new adventure begins with a single step, and the journey to the Ragon Isles is nearly here when the first of the two pre-expansion patches go live with the completion of Regional Realm Maintenance beginning October 25th. Phase 1, Talent System Revamp. We already know what this is. Uh, don't have to, like, read all the specifications here, but... Like, it's, it's the new talents. They, they even put as much in the launch roadmaps. Like, look, it's the talents. They're here. This is when they're going to be available. On the 25th. So this will be when you can start working on your potential builds and stuff like that, which is interesting. Heads up display user interface changes. So we're going to get all of the sweet new UI changes, which is good. Because... Uh, you'll want to make sure that you can set up your UI ahead of the actual release of the game. So that gives us some time to play around with the talent trees and the user UI, which are two things that I really, really want to get hands on with. So that's going to be good. Now, this next one surprised me a little bit more, which is accessibility features, a variety of new features that include press and hold spell casting, interact keys, gamepad support. I wasn't expecting that to come, like, on October 25th. We'll see how that works with the built-in gamepad support. That's going to be something that I want to test, but I don't think it's going to be something that I'm going to be using on World of Warcraft, despite the fact that I do use it on Final Fantasy XIV. Like, I'm just thinking about how I would do Heroic Leap on a controller. And just like, just thinking about doing Heroic Leap on a controller, I'm just like, ah, the targeting on that's going to be such a pain in the ass. I don't know about that. So, you know, I'd be down to test it out, but I just think that there's a lot of abilities, um, you know, because I was thinking about the Heroic Leap thing, and that made, you know, if once you think about that, start considering other abilities and targeting those. It's like, is it usable? Sure, but it's like, I like the snappiness of it, of being just like, nope, Heroic Leap there, click, boom, boom, boom. And on a controller, you're going to be aiming it. It's not going to be nearly as uh, as 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 um, snappy, so to speak. So I don't know. I don't think it's happening. Uh, for me, at least. But I think it'll be good if they add it. And I think it'll be good if it's functional for maybe other, uh, other classes or whatever. Rated Solo Shuffle. So this is some PvP stuff. First introduced as a PvP brawl. We up the stakes by adding the ability for players to earn or lose rating with the introduction of Rated Solo Shuffle. Players will be able to earn seasonal rewards and achievements, credit towards Vicious Mounts, weekly Great Vault progress and conquest similar to Rated Battlegrounds. So this is good. We'll be able to do this stuff solo without needing like a pre-made team. So that'll be interesting to see what that is like as well. New race and class combinations. The Rogue, Priest, and Mage class will become available to all races to create and play. Yes, because that's precisely what we need in PvP. More Rogue Mage Priest. That's what we need. We need more CC. The more, the merrier. We need all the CC. It's not good, it's bad. You get punished for random RNG being teamed with clowns. Dude. But the thing is, you, you still have the option. You have the option not to do solo. People have been asking for solo for so long... You're going to tell me, oh, this is awful. Why is it awful? You don't have to do it. People that queue for this, I assume, are only going to be... Um, they're only going to be match made with other people that are also 
doing solo. The the whole uh, PvP thing. It's like, like I was saying, like this is optional. You don't have to do solo. And you said people wanted one v one. Is that what people wanted? Like, look, the game is terribly balanced for one v one. The game is atrociously balanced for one v one. It's never been balanced for one v one. It's always been balanced for three v three. And even then, it's like <laughs> I say balanced very loosely. It's like, look, rated solo shuffle is just going to be something where the hybrids are hybrids are probably going to shine. Those classes that can heal themselves and survive, that is probably where those classes are going to shine. Classes that are not hybrids or don't have good PvP uh, abilities, those classes are kind of screwed. Tanks win solo shuffle? I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I mean... I'd love it if that's the case, because I'll go in there as Brat Warrior, no problem. Let's friggin' go. But, I don't know, I doubt that'll be the case. But, I'll try it out. It's whatever. I never care that much about PvP to begin with, so... Anyway, then we have Phase 2. New race slash class, Drakthir Evoker available. So, on Phase 2 is when these become available. Do keep in mind, uh, I assume you'll have to, you'll need to have, like, a pre-order if you want to be able to play the Drakthir Evokers. Uh, on November 15th, and I wonder how high you'll be able to level them. Well, you, you'll probably be able to level them all the way up to 60, right? I'm assuming. This is so that your Drakthir will be ready by the time the expansion comes out. 60, they start at 58. Oh, they start at 58 straight up? Oh, right. So it's it's kind of like the same thing as the, the Death Knights. You basically go straight. No, because the Death Knight still had to do... Death Knight still had to do Burning Crusade, right? Didn't Death Knights have to do Burning Crusade before they go into... Into Northrend? I think they did. Yeah, the, the Demon Hunters. Yeah, it's more like Demon Hunters. Yeah, yeah that, makes, that makes way more sense. Yeah, yeah, you guys are right. I wasn't playing the game nearly as much during the Demon Hunter days. Only thing I can remember is those stupid NPCs, the what are they called? The Cinderai going like, I've sacrificed everything. And I'm just like, I'm just going to them going like, who the fuck asked? Like, I, I, I just like to tell this to all the Cinderai elves that are always bitching about. I just like to ask all of them, who the fuck asked what you sacrificed? I don't give a fuck. All right. I just want you to know, if you're an elf of the Cinderai, Demon Hunter, whatever, I don't care. Okay, I don't care about you. <laughs> they're still alive, so they're not everything. Exactly, you clearly haven't sacrificed enough. You're still here. Anyway, new zone, the Forbidden Reach. Play through the starting zone for World of Warcraft's newest hero class, the Drakthir Evoker. New dungeon, Old Demand Legacy of Tyr. <clears throat> See, this is actually a dungeon that I really like. Because this dungeon is where you get... Don't you get the discs of Norganon or whatever at the end of this dungeon? If I remember correctly. You used to get the discs of Norganon. It would be all of this like Titan lore and whatnot. Yeah, this is going to be a new version. I'm just saying like in the old version. You got like the discs of Norganon and, and all of these things. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. I remember really liking this dungeon. And this is also the dungeon that has the Indiana Jones moment. With the staff. With the staff and the laser and the thing that points towards the city. It's this one. <clears throat> so that's a pretty cool dungeon. I like it. Located in the Badlands within the Eastern Kingdoms, players will venture into Old Demand to lay, keep, lay claim to a legacy of knowledge left behind by the Titans. Yeah, the, it actually says here, the Discs of Dor Norganon. I hadn't read this yet. I wasn't even sure that the, the, the proper name was Norganon. I just rem I actually remember that. That's cool. I hadn't read that. I swear I hadn't read this. People are going to say that. Oh, stage. No, I legit had not read this. Uh, the Ancient Titan facility is where long ago allies of the heroic keeper Tyr hid the discs of Norganon. In-game events, primal storms ward off attacks from the primalists when new quests and world events setting the stage for Dragonflight's launch. So, I think that um, it's a good thing that they're doing a two-phased release. Even though I know that a lot of the people that are prop that only play World of Warcraft, because there's a lot of people that only play World of Warcraft, they're probably going to be pretty upset because there's not that much actual content with the pre-patch. 
But as someone who wants to be able to play other games as well, this is very good because then I can just have uh, a little bit like 10 days to just play around. Is it 10 days? No. No, it's more. Oh, crap. That's, it's actually a ton of time. Wait. November 15th. That means... Yeah, the second phase of the pre-patch is two weeks. So the first phase of the pre-patch is, what, three weeks? Yeah, it's damn near three weeks. That's a little bit long. But either way, I appreciate the fact that I can basically spend some time messing around with the talent system, messing around with the UI, getting all of that ready, so that then when phase two launches, all you have to do is play the game. It's not two weeks from the 25th to the, to the 15th. It's a little bit more than two weeks. It's almost three weeks. It's not quite three weeks, but it's pretty close. Also think the XP boost is going to, is actually going until the 15th and not the first phase of pre-patch, which is nice. Yep, that's the way to do it. It's because talent tree still not working. What do you mean talent tree still not working? It better be working, considering that the talent system revamp is one of the things. It better be working on October 25th. Though I started to play Final Fantasy XIV yesterday, and I'm not even sure I went to play Dragonflight. Hey, man. It is what it is. They're still bugged for some classes. Well, let's hope they get that shit fixed. They better. They better get it fixed for the 25th. They don't want to be messing messing this up again. You definitely don't want to see another messed up launch for World of Warcraft. Because that will just be... Dude. I think another messed up launch will legitimately harm them in a, in a meaningful way this time. If they mess it up again. But, who knows? Either way. That's the launch plans for Dragonflight, October 25th pre-patch, November 15th, Drakthir. I don't, th I don't even know if I want to... The thing is, I want to play the Drakthir to see the zone. That's the only reason I want to play the Drakthir. I just want to see the zone itself. And also, we're not getting dragon riding. So if you want to see dragon riding, you will also want to do the Drakthir starting zone. So yeah, I'll probably, I'll pl I'll probably play a Drakthir for a little bit. Just to see the zone and to do a little bit of dragon riding. You want to play them because you're a scaly? No, I don't. I don't like them at all, and they're casters. I don't play casters. I give a damn. You want to see dragon riding till the twenty eighth? Yeah, I mean, but you can do it with the drakthir. The drakthir have the soar ability, so you can kind of like test the dragon riding, assuming they give you soar uh, in the starting experience, which. I, I don't believe they wouldn't do that, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the drag theory to basically just, like, see the zone and soar, check things out. But I have no intention of playing a drag theory. I'm playing my warrior. I'm a dwarven warrior through and through. That's my fit. 